How's it going? My name's John with Blackbird Productions, and I've owned my 2024 Tesla Model 3 Performance for over four months and over 4,000 miles, and I have some thoughts. Today, I'm gonna share those thoughts with you. But before we get into that, quick thing, I actually divided this video up into three harsh truths for my 2024 Tesla Model 3 Performance. I thought this would be better just to streamline our conversation just a little bit more. So with that, let's get into today's video. So. Harsh truth number one, it's undoubtedly the car community. And if you don't know, I live in the Dallas Metroplex area and everyone here likes to flaunt their wealth. It's a very bougie area and you have your typical crowds, you have your Ferraris, your Lamborghinis, your McLarens and so on. Uh, you also have your Millpar people as well as the Mustang people. And all of them seem to have something in common. None of them seem to really enjoy Teslas all that much or enjoy seeing them to that matter. I'm not sure why. Um, I have different theories and different things I've read online about why some people just don't like generally don't like Teslas. But to bring it back into this video, sometimes I show up to car meets or car shows and people just don't want to have anything to do with me. Um, I usually go there to network, but then when I say I have a Tesla and stuff like that, the conversation falls short most of the time. And I'll tell you, I've actually parked next to a Mustang there. So at a recent car meet I went to, I parked next to a Mustang and he actually moved over a space just because he didn't want to be associated with my car, which is so petty. Um, and I kind of just laughed it off. Like I had my family in the back, we were chilling. It wasn't really anything all that big to me. Uh, but it's just like so crazy like the links people would go just to like not associate themselves with Tesla. But the kicker is that's the same exact guy or le le let's just say that's the same exact car that I would see on the highway all the time trying to race me. Because if you don't know Mopar and Mustangs here they have a big ego problem and they always have something to prove no matter what car you're driving, if it looks fast, they will try to race you here. And I've had people pass me at 100 miles an hour, not just Mopar or Mustangs, trucks. I've had service vans, uh, stuff like that. People here just have a lot to prove. And it's just like, it's just interesting to me, like how people react around this car, uh, because it's almost the exact same way they would react to my i8 uh, that I sold recently. So if you're looking to own this car, definitely expect to be shunned from the car community and also raced on the highway uh, with other cars. Because I mean, like even with that, it's just like the car to me just looks like a regular Tesla. Like it doesn't look like anything special to me, but people always seem to have like the urge to just like pass it at a hundred miles an hour or like try to race it and stuff like that. And I don't know, I just feel like there's a time and place for that. I'm not really the type of person to like prove myself when it comes to that kind of stuff because I know how fast the car is and I know how capable it is. So why race someone just to waste the range that I would otherwise need to get to my destination? So I don't know, it's just stupid to me. All right, second harsh truth. This car is super electronic, which I mean, it doesn't surprise you just because it's an EV car, obviously. But this car, being a performance car is probably one of the most disconnected driving experiences I've ever had in any car. Uh, and this is coming from someone that owned a previous uh, EV uh, and I actually owned a BMW i3, which I call it an EV, but it's more of like a hybrid. Um, that car had more feedback just because it had a gas powertrain as well as electric, but they marketed it as an electric car. Um, so it had buttons, it had like all the tactile feedback and things that you would otherwise need to get a good feel of the car. But with the Tesla Model 3 Performance, Everything is in the screen, there's no buttons, and you just, I don't know, it just feels very disconnected uh, in terms of the driving experience. Um, especially so with this performance model because they've added a lot of sound dittening within the interior of the car. And it also has double paned windows. So you can't really hear much from the outside. So it feels very, very hollow. When you're like, especially if you're going like 100, 120 miles an hour, stuff like that, you're really getting on the car. I mean, you really feel anything. Like, I mean, you obviously feel like, you know, like gut wrenching feeling, like almost like a roller coaster when you're, you know, when you're going from zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. But other than that, it's not really anything like tactile. It's a very tasteless experience. I'm not sure if that's a right right word I would use, but that's the word that comes to mind. It doesn't really have like a character to it. 
like other cars I've driven because I've I've driven um, 97 Porsche Boxster S. I've driven an i8 before as well. I've driven a lot of different cars and this vehicle is the most disconnected driving experience I've had in a performance model car ever. So if you don't really care too much about that, you just care about the speed and the looks and stuff like that, definitely go and buy this car. But if you care about a more tactile, more, more passionate driving experience with character, you should definitely look into something else because this definitely isn't it. All right, last harsh truth is around the Tesla community. And I have a lot to say about the Tesla community. Um, but one of the things that I took down as a note for this video, I have my laptop next to me, is how nitpicky the Tesla community is, especially with new deliveries, like new car deliveries. It seems to be centered around that. Um, I'll say if you go on like the Reddit Model 3 uh, subreddit, you'll find a lot of people just like nitpicking over like the littlest little small things. Um, and I'll tell you like, I, I'll, I'll give you an example of what that might look like. You take delivery of a brand new Tesla Model 3 and it has like a micro millimeter scratch on the side that can only be seen under a magnifying glass. These are the type of imperfections that people point out. These are the type of people who own Teslas, at least in my experience. They're very nitpicky, very meticulous when it comes to owning their cars. And if there's just the slightest thing wrong with the car, they'll, they'll just call their insurance company and total out the car. And that's if the insurance company will, uh, would allow that. But it's kind of like a running joke. If you don't already know on the Tesla subreddit, at least on Reddit, it's a running joke where people like find small imperfections like that. And all you see in the comments section is people just saying like totaled in all caps, call your insurance company, make a Tesla service ticket to address it. And just like stuff like that over just like small, small little things. And I think Tesla definitely is a much better company when it comes to quality than they were, for example, like three or four years ago. So they're definitely getting better and their cars aren't perfect, just like any car isn't perfect, especially a brand new car. So that's something you'll see when you join the Tesla community. So that is the video. If you've come this far, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this type of content, definitely leave a like and also consider subscribing. I make two videos per week and I also have car reviews that I make each month. So definitely check out my other content. This has been John with Viper Productions and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Won't you dance